Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another short video all about care and repair of DTI gauges with my friend Bob. Bob's just turned up, so how are you, Bob? Let's have a start yet. I'm coming again, yeah, I'm coming. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. All right, well, your bench is all sorted for you, so you can. Oh, what champion. Right. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for all the comments. Uh, this week, we're going to do um, removing the scratches out your lens on the front of your DDI, um, how to make a new lens, just a short clip to give you a rough idea of what we're going to do, and how to clean your face on your DDI. Um, I've touched on this bit about clean your faces a bit in general, but um, we're going to do a bit more in depth. But today, first off, is going to how to clean your light scratches from your crystal, your lens, whatever you want to call it, on your DDI's. Right, let's get cracking. Right, now this is the, the John Bull that I repaired and restored for John, as you can see it's working champion. Um, it's got some very fine scratches on the top. Now this will happen because miss you, so it doesn't live in the box. By now, if everybody's been watching me, me videos, or John's videos, I hope you've been making boxes for them to go into. Now, the way I do it is... The way I do it. Now, you, you, you's out there might you want to use something other than what I use, or you might want to do it a different way. But this is how I do it. Anyway, it's, it's slightly scratched. I can feel them with my thumb. Can't really see them in in the the screen. You want some very fine. This is, uh, I think it's. This is 400 grit, uh, wet and dry. And like, what you want to do. You can use fine, eh? Very small circles go around. Don't just work in one place. You want to go all the way around. And the idea is, is, is to remove the heavy scratches. And as, as you use the um, wet and dry, it'll get finer and finer and finer. And it's like when you clean the DTIs, the internals, um, the more you do, or the more time you take over and doing it, the better the results go to be. Now, I use um, the paste type chrome cleaner to clean it, metal polish. You can use the liquid type if you want to use the liquid type. You can buy Pacific polish for cleaning uh, polishing plastic or you can use um, the same products such as tea cut and that what they use for polishing your paint or taking scratches out your paintwork on your car you can even use toothpaste but if you've got your own workshop you I hope you're not using toothpaste to polish your brass up with you should be using proper metal polish as you can see you just keep going round and round and round and it might take one go, it might take two goes. You never go with the direction of the scratch. Because if you go with the direction of the scratch, you're just going to make the scratch deeper. You want to keep going around in little circles. And as I say, you can work your way down it, your, your, your sandpaper. Like you've got 400, you've got 800, 1000, 1200. The higher the number, the, the finer the grit. But I, I like 400, and as it works down, it becomes finer in itself, and you get a nice finish. So you'll end up with something looking like that. Um, if you put two heavy scratches in, that means you just got to work it out with with finer. As I say, I use the paste type. And this is a nice clean cloth. Prefer like a cotton cloth. Wrap round round your, your your pinky, your finger. Some people use buffing wheels. I don't recommend using buffing wheels because you can get the plastic too hot, and the plastic has a tendency of shrinking. 
and it becomes loose in the bez in the bezel, so it ends up being no good. And again, like when you were sanding, round and round and round in circles. It don't have to be really that specific in which way you go. You can go any anti-clockwise, clockwise. But as, as like I said, the more you work at it, the better you finish. Round and round and round and round. Then, quick buff. Oop, I'm sliding around all over the place. <coughs> there we go. All the scratches removed, nice and shiny, bit of bling. That's all it takes. This was a fairly simple one to do because it wasn't that badly scratched. Some of them are getting it, they really are heavily scratched. And again, you just got to take your time. That's why I say it and take up to four hours to do repair a DTI because every little detail counts. And there we go. Job's jobbed. This is a, an inner lens from a welding helmet. It's the what you, what protects your, your actual inner workings. When this gets all scratched and dirty, you throw it away. Now, if you were making a flat one, you'd leave this clear perspex on both sides, this clear protective tape. Then you would cover it in masking tape, like that, so it's nice and white. Now, what I mean by a flat lens, this is a flat lens, what's in this Mercer, it's flat. Unlike the John Bull, it's curved, it's got a dome, right? See the dome? Masses, no dome, flat. Flat ones is the easiest ones to make, so you don't need to polish that if that's scratched. Lift that out, put it on the, the perspex you've got, and draw around it. Now, it's the inner ring you want, not the outer ring. So, cut round it, cuts fairly, it's 0.8mm thick. It cuts fairly simple with a pair of scissors. When you get somewhere near the line, you can actually use some emery cloth glue to a piece of MDF as like a, a file. And what I use is that um, sticky stuff you use for holding uh, pictures or posters onto walls. It comes blue or a um, bit like chewing gum, you know the stuff. Blue tack. Blue tack. You just put a bit on there so it helps you lift in and out. So you make sure that you've got it a, a nice snug fit inside there before you take any of the, the protecting covering off. Because once you take the covering off, sure as hell you would scratch it. There'll be a bit of um, dust with the emery cloth, a bit of grit in off the emery cloth and all that sort of stuff. So once I've got it to make it fit nicely, I'll remove one side. And then I'll use Bob's painted uh, sucker. It's actually a hook. I think it's meant for bathrooms or somebody has got a hook on it and do know where it got from. And it's a, it's a rubber sucker. And basically, you just stick it on the plastic. Ideal for pulling them out, but also for putting them in so it keeps your fingerprints off the bottom lens. Top lens, you just clean with a, with a cloth. And that's how you replace a, a, a flat lens. Now, I've got the old lens off John. Because I don't want a new lens, but this is an old lens off one of his cameras. What he uses for his cameras. Now, there's. there's you can see me painted it. Oh, I won't. It's a pop can. It's got a dome in the bottom. That dome replicates the dome on the lens. Some tins has got a better dome than others. That's a nice dome. And I do use these domes. But this is a pressurised container. Please, please be very, very careful. If you put that on the bench as it is now, I'm just going to squirt stuff all over the place. But we use magic tins like this at work, but it's, it's industrial clean, we call it at work. And when they're empty, I just degas them and cut so far around. So I've got this dome. Then I'll cut another one, so I've got the inside of the dome. So you've got an inter that one that way. 
And if you imagine you've got the other side on the other side. Now, I'm not going to use none of them because I'm going to replicate the making a little one. And that's a jam jar and a ball. It's a hard ball. You need a hot air gun. Right? One of these big boys. And you need to get the plastic warm so it's soft. It's a bit hard to see in, in the, the thingy because it's the, the plastics. If you get the plastic so it's bubbling, you're getting it too hot. You just want it so it's soft, it will move on its own. It doesn't take much. John's got to grab out of the hot air gun over the jam jar and I'm going to push down. I don't know if cameras can say that, but there's the dome. It's a little dome, but it's a little dome for a little DTI. Can you see it? That's all it takes. I'll do another one. Do a, do a, do a big one. I haven't got a bigger ball. No, it's a terrible. But I'll do a deeper one. Right. Right, so I'll, I'll use the same, same technique. So the bigger the jar or the bigger the, the, the thing you're going to be using, the bigger the dome's going to be. Um, well unfortunately my big ball, see so I'm getting bubbles in it like that. Once you get bubbles in it like that you're getting it too hot but I don't mind because it's just for demonstration purposes only. Push down, doesn't take long. Now you couldn't use that, I jumped the switch, because it's all gone all bubbly. You can see it? But that's the basic idea. And now I've done that many. Um, I usually get the nap off just by looking what it looks like. They're not expensive these things to buy, I mean, um, around where I work there's, um, there's a unit what supplies welding equipment and I go in there and ask them for any old natty lenses or lenses what's dropped out the packages because they might, they won't sell them to the customer but they are right for me to buy for a fiver or something, you know. There we go, there's a better one. And any scratches what you might incur, you just let it cool down, polish it, and if you can imagine the lid of my oiler, there's the top of the DTI. There's your lens. Simple as. Right now then, we've done how to clean the lens, and we've done how to make a new lens. Now what a lot happens with these is the lens gets, it doesn't get knocked off. Well, if, what I tend to find is the plastic what the lens is made out of shrinks. Then it just drops off, then they just get hiding drawers now. I don't know if you can say that well on the camera, but that lens, they're not the lens. The, the, the face is absolutely covered in dirt, muck. Now, when I first started doing this, um, try to find in, out information how to clean a, a face, as I call it, or a dial, or an index, whatever you want to call it, was very limited. Um, so I tried several things with no, no success. Um, you don't use IPA, you don't use brake cleaner, you don't use petrol, you don't use lighter fluid, you don't use furniture polish, all these things I've tried and they've all done the same thing and that's remove partner or all of the lettering or the numbers. I even had a dial once and I just soaked it in warm water and the letters and the numbers were ended up floating on the water because there must have been like a transfer. So I did a bit of research, as I can find a bit of research, and the best thing I come up with is what's in your mouth human spit um, you, can, you can go on online and look on it on, online you can buy synthetic human spit um, 
I came across this, there was an old guy who was actually cleaning a work of art which was like worth one point something on million on pounds and basically he had, he had a, a bag of unbleached cotton and he had um, what you would describe as long um, cocktail sticks and it was putting the cocktail sticks in the cotton wood and making it so it was like a cotton wood board and then just wetting it in his mouth, the cotton wood board then cleaning a bit of the picture then snapping that end off snapping that off and doing it again so the, the stick would actually work down in size then he would get another stick and he's working it an inch at a time um, so that's all I use to clean the faces on dirty eyes is a cotton wood bud and what's in your own mouth but I don't have a cup of coffee or pop or anything daft like that I just rinse my mouth out with a glass of cold water I know it's off camera but believe me I've just dumped that in my mouth and I'm only going to do half to see if you can see the, the difference between the half and as I'm doing it I'm rolling the cottonwood bud I don't know if you can see the muck on the cottonwood bud eh? now wet the opposite end I know that the hands and that's still on this one. It's it's one I've I've getting um, for parts. Um, really, the the movement in itself's all right. Really, I should put it in a bag, but it doesn't have a lens. See the muck, and you do it as much as you want. In the safe knowledge that you're not going to remove any of the lettering. And you just leave it to dry, air dry. There we go. That's the state of the muck what's come off the cottonwood board. And I can tell on, on just John's view, this side I haven't touched, and that side I've, that's one I've done. I can tell the difference straight away. But if you start using any chemicals or any solvents, you can forget that because that'll just take that face straight off. And I have tried it, and somebody recommended using a lighter fluid. And I did use light fluid and I ended up with no numbers, no nothing. Because it's, it's like an ink, it's not a paint. What they go on to is a paint. But these letters and numbers, it's a, it's, they call it an ink. Um, and it's very fragile really. To what it, I mean, even the magic stuff what you get in a blue tin will fetch it off. Um, so that's how you clean your dials on your dirty eyes. Right, Bob, that was great. Thanks very much. There's a lot of information there. I'm sure people will find it really helpful as well as interesting. Once again, if you want to contact Bob regarding a repair or to give him a broken DTI, you yeah, contact me first. That's my email up there, and I'll send you Bob's email. Anyway, thanks for watching.